Welcome to the Hard Water Fishing Show. Jeff and Jason talk tactics, gear, and ice fishing legends. We are a live hard water fishing show season six, episode 12. It is the final week of January, 2023, man. The winter's flying by, isn't it? I know we got, I mean, I feel like the, it's like uh summer where like the holidays officially end the summer. I feel like in Minnesota, the kind of the official end of ice fishing is like the end of February, even though you yeah. can ice fish much later than that, it kind of falls off after the end of February. Well, and we had such an iffy ice season at the beginning that it just seems like we haven't been doing this. I know. I know. But the days are getting longer. So, um, you know, I think we're getting to the part of winter now where I can contemplate jumping to a place pretty quick right after work. Sure. Yeah. You know, and still having a little bit of time to fish. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Because it's hard to get set up in the dark. Not impossible, but it is much Yeah. Harder. I don't mind fishing in the dark and I don't mind tearing down in the dark, but walking out, unless you have like a spot, like, you know, exactly. And I never know, like, I rarely know, okay, I'm going to this spot. It's always just like, oh, here's a new lake. I'm going to randomly fish that. And that's weird to walk out in the dark. Well, I fished a new spot last weekend and I had a spot to go to in, I'm like, oh, it's not very far. I parked the car and I started walking and I'm like, oh, that's much further than, (laughs) yeah, you know, it's deceiving because it's flat and open and you're like, oh, that's not very far away. And then you walk and walk and walk and you're like, wow, that's pretty far. And a couple, you know, like six inches of hard packed snow and toe in your gear and all that stuff. Yes. Yes. And we, we should talk about that later. Remind me to talk about it later. Okay. So before we get there, we should talk about our topic. We just got past the intro. It's going to be a long show. Yeah, today. yeah, we should. We should. Good. That's okay. Good. Why don't you tell everybody what our topic is, Joe? Yeah. So we're going to talk about two things. So we have Steve Olson from Ice Hole Heater on, and he's going to tell us about this product he's developed to keep your ice hole open, even when it's like below zero. He had one, a hole open for 18 hours today, and it was... I don't know, nine below, one be- one below for a high. I mean, it was freezing all day long. So, so he's going to talk about that and his uh, artwork. Also, he makes a bunch of artwork. So cool. He'll he'll be on, and then we're going to talk a little bit about tip ups too. Yeah, we'll do some tip up tips, tip up tips, tip up tips, tip, tip down up tips, and yeah. tip down tips, tip up tip downs. I don't even I don't use tip down, so you're going to have to do the tip down I've, tips. I've got yeah, I've got some things. Sweet. I'm not sure I know what a tip down is, but we'll find out. <laughs> well, it's the opposite of a tip up. I don't know. All right. We'll get into that. So Jason, do you have a beverage? I do. So Jeff, do you remember when we were together last time and we bought all those beers? Yeah. In, in, Park they came Rapids? home with, and they came home with me. Oh, well, so I had, you're uh, drinking my beer is quick, what you're telling me. I, I did not tonight, but I already did. Oh, <laughs> so I drank. Um, do you remember what they, when was the Bemidji brewing? one right i don't know was that the old sloth or no that was old a chub one. but anyway the, there was one like was a a chocolate stout or something yeah yep. dang that was good i know it was good last night i had a peanut butter chocolate stout whoa Ooh, i had the peanut butter one too that one came home with me that one was good too but i actually <laughs> liked the, the other one better sweet um yeah and it it paired well with supper last night, which wasn't gourmet by any stretch. It was tuna tuna noodle ca- tuna noodle casserole. Mm. So that, yeah, I don't know. Some might possible. call that gourmet. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. But that's what we had for supper. We so. don't eat tuna noodle casserole at my house. There's no tuna. There was a, you know, in those foods that you have when you're a child and yeah. you don't ever eat again because you hated it so badly. Yeah. Uh, tuna casserole is one of Aaron, my wife, Aaron's most hated foods so we do not eat tuna casserole at my house really? ever yes. it was that was one of the first type of meals my wife ever cooked mm. yeah. so, it's so like it's, newly married it, i i eat it uh, we also don't cook meatloaf at my house i don't request it but i eat it i do request meat yes there's no meatloaf or tuna, great salad meatloaf. My or tuna casserole yeah. it's a lovely meatloaf it has a, like a frosting on it it's like a brown sugar ketchup tomatoey frosting on top of it it's the best meatloaf ever I hate it. I got a meatloaf story for, you. I know this is a little divergent, but it's a, All good, right. it's a funny meatloaf story. story. So meatloaf. then we got to drink a beer. Yeah. 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 So my wife's meatloaf is wonderful. 
I love it. I hated meatloaf growing up. My mom made the worst meatloaf ever. It's like this dry, terrible meatloaf. And I can, I'll, you'll understand why I can disparage my mother's meatloaf in a minute. So you just threw your mom under the bus. I mean, like, I did, but there's I mean, a reason. I would so watch yourself. <laughs> one time. <laughs> I would after, watch it. Well, one time after, I don't know, it was a number of years ago, maybe 10 years, I've been married 10, 15 years. And I was telling, I don't know how meatloaf came up. And I'm like, you know, dad, dad you just should try Sherry's meatloaf because I, I, it's really good. You should just try it sometime. And it's like, he's like, well, no, I, I, I like your mother's meatloaf. And I somehow I got you to say talk. it like that and kind of look yeah. at the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of got to talking later to mom. I don't know if it was the same day or later. And I'm like, why do you, you know, that Sherry's got a good meatloaf recipe. You should just try it sometimes. She's like, no, I make your dad's got a meatloaf recipe that he likes. And I always make it just because I think his mom made it or something. Well, come to find out, dad did not like the meatloaf. <laughs> mom only did not like it. She only made it because she thought he liked it. So wow. neither one of them liked the dang meatloaf. And we suffered through this meatloaf as children. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So long story short is communicate with people. <laughs> communicate. And and I don't get meatloaf, but I don't think it's because it was the bad meatloaf. I okay. I actually like it when I go to people's houses and we get to eat meatloaf because I don't get it at my house. So the best thing is leftover meatloaf. Because then I take a I take a slab of that meatloaf and I put it on a piece of bread like a sandwich. And you put a piece of cheese over the top of it, and you make just big honking meatloaf sandwich. But you know what I couldn't do without with just meatloaf is I would be very thirsty like I am right now. <laughs> Me too. Okay. I think I'm hungry. I haven't had supper yet. That's probably why I'm thinking food, thinking meatloaf. Anyway, let's drink a beer. So Jeff, what are you drinking tonight, sir? So my brother came ice fishing with me. To, to uh, the, more te- I see a Texas beer in your face. Uh, there's some, We have Texas beer again because he brought me some beer. So we've got Live Oak Pre-War Pills. It's an early American Pilsner. Ooh, extraordinary lagers and ales craft brewed in Austin, Texas since 1997, using traditional beer making methods inspired by old world style beers. Yep. It's good. Good beer. All right. Good beer. All right. So I'm drinking Anchor from Anchor Brewing Company, steam beer. It doesn't really have a story on the list. So I did it looks Google like generic it. beer. Like it should just say it beer just on the side beer. of it. Well, I, I Googled <laughs> it quick here just to see what the heck it is. Cause this is one we bought in Park Rapids. It came apparently all the way from San Francisco. To Anchor Park Brewing Rapids. Company was started in 1896 and they say they're America's first craft brewery. So whatever that means. So yeah, there you go. I don't think they called it craft beer in 1896. I don't think they did either. That's good. I like that. Sweet. That's a good beer. Take another sip. See if I like it as good as a brewery. Yeah, that's a solid beer. Sweet. Well, good. Now we can go back to meatloaf. <laughs> I don't anyway, have any meatloaf. I'll uh, I'll post Sherry's meatloaf recipe on the Facebook page if anybody oh, wants it. Yeah, <laughs> I like that, it. It'll people will be like, "What the heck?" And you just say, "You have to listen to the episode." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's the best meatloaf you'll ever eat. So uh, we're moving on to patron. We want to say thank you to all of our patrons and also to our patron of the show david m is our patron of the show david thank you for your support cheers to you cheers to you and listener news we got some listener news here jay we do and the first one was i was supposed to read this this fishing report about malax before i went to malax and i did <laughs> you were so we got a, a shout out from uh, austin austin b and, and he said he's, you know, listens to the show, which we really appreciate. Thanks, Austin. And he said um, him and his buddies were out doing some fishing. They're up in Mille Lacs and did really well. And I'm like, hey, my buddy Jeff doesn't do real well in Mille Lacs, but fishes it all the time. And, you know, any tips would be great. So he was awesome. And he sent some tips and Jeff didn't even read them. Well, I didn't read them, but I did follow them without following them. Last weekend, I was. Okay. His advice was during the day. Fish deep, deep mud is what he said, but deep because there's a lot of mud in Mille Lacs. Uh, 20 or 30 yards off the edge of the flats and 29 to 35 feet of water. So kind of where I was last weekend, it was a very deep spot. I was in, it wasn't 35 feet because that's about as deep as that like gets, but I was in about 29 feet of water. I marked some fish, but it was pretty quiet. Looks like he was having good luck on clam pinhead minnow. Do you ever use those? I do have a pinhead and I do pull them out. I worry they don't have the right color. My favorite colors on Mille Lacs are kind of pink and red. Okay. Yeah. That's and that's pretty I don't, standard. And, and unfortunately, a lot of my stuff is Lake of the Woods slanted sometimes, and it's a lot of yeah. that perch color. Yeah. And so I have the wrong stuff. So I got to get some more red stuff in my 
color palette. Sure. But yeah, I still, the Perch Talker is still my go to because when they're finicky, that drop chain. Then we got something from Dawson P. Did you see these pictures, Jay? I did. They were cool. And did you notice that? And we'll post this up there, but Dawson sent him one picture. He's out on the ice, the sun's going down. The moon's there and it's a lunar eclipse. I confirmed that it was a lunar eclipse in the picture. Yeah, that is like super cool. So we'll get that, that is like, that's a one, that is a neat shot. That is just a, such a cool, I want to I thank Dawson for sending it. I don't have the words to describe it on the podcast. It's just really good, right? And it's the, the one, the second one, that's one his too, right? From Dawson yes. there. Yes. Such an Iowa-esque picture. It's got, you know, just, it's just flat as a pancake. And you've got like a grain bin in the background and the sunset. It's just, that's what my fishing looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And he is from North Central Iowa mm-hmm. between Ames and Webster City. Yep. So. Yep. So that's pretty cool. He, he's got, certainly got an eye for photography. Definitely. And we'll uh, get, at least I wanted to get that lunar eclipse one up because it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put that up on the social media. Yeah. You got a message from Timmy Hall, right? Yep. Timmy Hall checked in. He's doing some uh, trout fishing and caught some nice trout. Let's see, four inches of ice. When, was, when did he send this in? Was it a, couple, a week ago or so? It wasn't very long. It's pretty recent within this yeah. week for sure. Four inches of good ice and one inch of crap ice pulled in two nice trout. So that was pretty cool. Uh, trout yeah. are pretty fish. They are. They're very pretty fish. And I'm sure he's using his custom rods out there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Let's see. Then Thor B checked in. Red River just south of Lake Winnipeg. Fishing country up there. <laughs> yep. Auger didn't run. Must be a gas auger. <laughs> yeah, I solved that problem. No more gas auger for me. Broke his ten up. He had a tough day. Broke his ten up. Got one heater. One heater wouldn't work. Got one working though. Minnows froze solid. But, and the rod, his rod bell fell off the tip and into the hole. It still walks on water. If you think about it, every day your worst day of fishing, ice fishing. If well, maybe not your worst day, but most days ice fishing, you walk on water. Your worst you day would probably be if you didn't. <laughs> that would be your worst day if you if you were swimming instead. You yes. failed that. If you failed that test, you wouldn't wouldn't be your. That would be your worst day. Cool. Well, that's some. Thank you. We always like pictures and people who send in uh, listener news. Uh, send them in. We love to hear and talk about them. All right, show business, Jason. Uh, the best place to interact with us is on social media, is Instagram and Facebook. You can find us on TikTok. I've been slacking on that a little bit lately. There's a couple TikToks out there. Although my 11-year-old told me that he's going to help me with TikTok cuz that'd be perfect. Because he said, "Dad, you know there's trending like songs. If you pick the yep. right song, it's trending and you need to know which one is trend. There's like trending things." Well, and put I'm him like, in charge of you, you know, you guys you're lucky. He goes fishing with you. Just put does. him in charge of doing your TikTok. You guys could be out there doing a TikTok thing. I know we talked about this, so it's hard. Once you're out there, I just want to fish and those things are I distractions. Know. But he'll know? get bored when he gets bored. Put him on TikTok. Yeah, you're right. He'll get bored. All right. And we have our website, hardwatershow.com. You can find us on YouTube at, at Hardwater Show. And you can email us, hardwatershow at gmail.com. And we have a link tree that everybody knows, even Jason now, about. I have not been to that, by the way. He, he, he's been to our YouTube page. You couldn't use it anymore, but the HWFS link. All right, we did get a fact check, Jay. Did you see this? And I think I was right. It happens sometimes. Because I said it was Berkshire. Yep. Not Berkshire. Berkshire. Berkshire's. So Chris yep. W., thanks, thanks. I can't talk. Thanks for the mention on the podcast. It's mentioned Ber- pronounced Berkshire's, not Berkshire. For the tip-up, he's using Heritage Laker tip-ups in 40-pound 40 40 braid. Yep. No, 40-up brand. Okay, some 40-up. It's a local company. Okay. His point was, we had talked about, he was saying something about the thing humming. Yeah. So the bass run so hard, the tip-ups vibrate. Holy crap. That's yeah. Fun. That, that'd be awesome. When when we see that on a tip-up, it's usually a dang snot rocket, like a really spunky little 18-inch <laughs> northern that just takes off and runs for the hills. So you're usually like, oh, darn it. The big fish seem to go slower. Yeah. At least the walleyes and northerns. There's like... Because nobody bothers them. They take, they eat what they want and they just wander <laughs> away. They're like, wow, what's this pokey thing in my mouth? Yeah. Well, it might be a hook. I don't know. But yeah, uh, they don't, they're, well, they're not trying to get away with the bait from, yeah. right. Yeah. So they just wander. But thanks for, uh, we always appreciate it. No other uh, fact checks, Jeff. So everything from the previous show remains, remains, right? 
Yeah, that was the only one I saw. I thought there was another fact check, but I'll have to go look back in the messages because it's not here. But I thought there was one more. But okay. if we screwed up and missed it in the time frame allowed, then we'll, we'll put we'll, it in. We'll come back and allow the fact check. A couple gear updates, Jay. Yeah, I have a couple too. So you go first. You know, I got the new shuttle, the Bass King shuttle. Yep. And the new 20 amp hour uh, battery because I was not happy with the runtime of the lithium shuttle. And... I don't know. To be honest, I always like to talk nice about everything, but I don't know if I can recommend this setup right now. I'm still figuring it out, I guess. Um, well, I think it, we should always we'll always just tell it how it is, man. I've done some customizations to the shuttle. The problem, the main problem I had, so it has like a metal, the main body of it's a metal. It's like a metal L that holds the structure of the, the handle goes at the top and then okay. the unit goes to the bottom and it's like an L. So on the bottom... It's aluminum because it's super light. And on the bottom, they cut in two like little feet into the bottom, you know, like two little feet. So it's like flat across and there's two little bumps. Like, okay. Well, they're really sharp. Like, like it's going to scratch everything that it touches. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, like imagine you're going across the lake or whatever. I mean, you put it in your truck, it just scratches everything, right? I mean, it's just too sharp. I guess I've had to customize it, right? So I took I ground them down and polished okay. them up. And it's not that you can't do that, but I can't I imagine know, at the, at the price saying, point though, you shouldn't have to. Right. So well, and actually what I did was I tried, I bought some plasti dip. Yeah. Uh well, I put it on there, sprayed it on, turned the heater on the garage, put a bunch of coats on there. And like it rubbed up immediately and like didn't stick, right? I actually um went with duct tape. <laughs> there you go, that'll work. <laughs> uh it, it, so I'm not super happy with it. I mean, you gotta have something. The problem is is there's not really a lot of options for shuttles, to be honest. No, there's not. Uh, um the only thing it made me realize is like the lithium shuttle that comes from from um uh who makes the lithium shuttle? Markham is the one Markham. You realize how well it is engineered, actually, when you get something else that's maybe less engineered, right? Mm-hmm. You realize that it actually does work pretty well for its purpose. If only they made the battery bigger. That was really the reason I had to get the shuttle. It was the bigger battery. Sure. I don't know. I ran my battery out and it was, I think maybe I ran it out. It seemed to shut off a lot earlier than I thought. It was under 24 hours and I expected it to run close to 24 hours. We're going to do some more testing before I determine that was actually the case. It might've been installation error. Like maybe I didn't put the contacts in tight enough and I bumped it and it shut off because <laughs> okay. I charged. So I, that's low, but I would say overall, I'm still looking for the ultimate shuttle. Obviously I bought this thing, so I'm going to use it. So I put duct tape on the bottom and kind of polished up the sharp edges and uh, see how it goes. But I also bought a trophy angler bag to put on around the shuttle to kind of cover up all those sharp pieces. So I put duct tape over the sharp things and then put it in a bag. So it didn't bang on things. Um, Boy, I don't know that this is, this is all of a sudden, then you'll have to buy a box to put your bag in. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> and then, so, so I don't know what the answer is, but to be honest, if I said, so I have the lithium shuttle, right. That I was going to get rid of. I probably still will get rid of it. You know, I went through this whole thing and I don't know how much better off I am than I was before. I mean, I have a better battery, but your wallet's a little lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Wallet's a little lighter. Uh, I don't know. It's, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but then again, I don't know what else is out there. Like if you want to mount your Helix seven, you have to have something, right? I mean, you can't just, I don't know, maybe DIY is the way to go on the stuff. I'm not sure. I guess if somebody has a, other ideas of how they've done it. I'd love well, doesn't it. Hummingbird make a shuttle for their stuff? Yeah, it well, it's very expensive. Well, so there, but there's a reason. Yeah, it's very expensive. And actually, I couldn't find one. I looked, so you could buy the package, the mm-hmm. ice package. It was about a thousand bucks for Helix Seven and the holder and the battery and everything. But you couldn't buy the. I could supposedly they sold it, but you couldn't buy the shuttle alone. Like it was on their website that you could buy it alone, but I couldn't find even Amazon or reeds or any kind of store that sells ice fishing equipment you could only buy the whole kit with the helix 7 well i already have the helix 7 for my boat i'm not going to buy another one just so i can get the get yeah you know, i'm not gonna buy a thousand dollar one just so i can get the 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 case um we actually saw them on sale i think at lnm fleet and park rapids i think it was they were nine hundred dollars mm-hmm. but still a lot of money so it, it's been an ordeal i don't know if it's better or worse but it's been an it's been an ordeal there's certainly some other shuttles on the market 
Um, yeah, but I saw one at there, Shields like for two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, there's there's a Summit Fishing Equipment makes one for two hundred ninety. But they're like they're still metal. The ones I was seeing were metal. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually like the plastic because it's you know when you're banging across the lake and stuff, it's actually more durable than the metal. I think and lighter. Hmm. This and Summit also, one looks pretty cool. Oh well. I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of in on this one now because you know after you d- plasti dip it and grind it and <laughs> make it work for what you're yeah, trying to you're, make it work. You're probably uh, you own it. You're you're in that one until it's no longer in, in with us. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, I understand. So. I mean that it's the thing is it, it's not like you can return it. So you're just it, that's what you've got now. Well, that's the other thing you kind of get when you buy the I'm going to say the national brand stuff. Sometimes when you go to Shields, you know they have a great return policy. Right. Yep. And you, if you don't, if it doesn't work out, you can return it. But once you buy something kind of custom, it's a little harder. Yep. No, I agree. So anyways, I'll stop lamenting about it, but um, I did yeah. get that, that bag, that trophy angler bag, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, it covers everything. So now I've got the shuttle in a bag, Good. not in a box, <laughs> but I would feel confident. Bag. Yeah. <laughs> I would feel confident bringing this combo out to the Lake of the Woods and, st- you know, bringing it around and it would, that it won't get damaged. So right. you don't have to take it out of the bag to use it. You just unzip the front, roll it over like you do a normal x yes. or where that's in a bag. Yep. And it's actually the okay. only bag I've ever seen that was made to fit a Helix 7 or 5. Okay. Because, you know, if you get a flasher bag, there's lots of flasher bags, but those aren't wide enough, right? Yeah. I mean, they're not big enough. So this one, it's actually meant to fit the lithium shuttle, funnily enough. It's designed to fit that because it, it has accessories that you can like stick out the sides and stuff. Oh, okay. But it also fits my shuttle, so it's okay. It, I just got it in the mail today, and it was thirty-five bucks, which is pretty cheap as anything goes these days. So yeah, sure. All right. So my next gear item is this is your fault, Jason. <laughs> I always like it when I help you spend money. So I bought this backpack because I, I bought see that. that. I bought a rod bag, and and you kind of called out a thing that I didn't realize was a problem, but was the rod bag is hard it's big and hard to get into your ice shack yep but a backpack is not correct so and i looked around and there was some backpacks out there that were like 200 dollars for the clam pro backpack and i'm like i ain't doing that right it's just too much looked at some other back fishing backpacks but they were too big like they just you know you want to they want to put all these you're carrying half of your life along with you when you yeah, go Yeah, you don't there. need, it's not like open water where you might have just this huge monstrosity of tackle. Right. And, like you and, just don't have that amount of tackle in, in ice fishing. You don't. I mean, your jigs are like, you know, 32nd, 16 ounce jigs. So I found this awesome actually backpack after looking on YouTube and stuff. And it's small. They actually have a really small version and then a bigger one. And I got the bigger one. It's still not very big. There's a picture of it here. You can see it's. It's, I think it's smaller than your backpack, probably, Jay. Okay. Uh, but it's got cool little like straps on the outside to hold your fishing tools. It's very tactical. It, it's very tactical. It has somebody complained on the reviews that it has too many straps and things, but you know, it was, it was like $30, which I That's thought a was good a good price. Yeah. Your reasonable price. And it's, it has space for all my ice fishing stuff. So now that's my ice fishing bag that I can bring in the shack, which I use this weekend. And then the rob bag can stay outside the shack. That, and that's, that's kind of, especially with the one man shack. Now that that's what I've been doing is I grab the rods. I want, I chuck the bag outside the shack Yep. and, and then it, it just sits there because in a one man shack, I didn't have this trouble with my two man, but the you just don't have room for that rod bag. Yeah. Great. It's just, it just gets in the way and it, just and then it just if something if something is in the way then it creates an opportunity to break so. yes breaking happens right yes, yes. i agree and, and so. that's where i like the backpack thing too i think it's always been important to me because you can fit all your stuff in a small compact thing for ice fishing to be it's kind of like a go bag right you go ice fishing exactly you know, you know everything's in there that you need versus like mm-hmm. it's scattered around and you get out in the ice and you're like oh where's my cutters for the line oh that's right it's in my other spot and i didn't bring that right it's it's well and where you you fish between like your portables and your permanent yes and so this way if you have that bag you're not storing stuff necessarily in your little shack or in your big shack it goes in in your backpack yeah a lot of people just keep all their stuff like in their permanent shack but you know some days i go mobile some days i go in the permanent shack right i mean and and you need it with you or you want a whole hop while you're at your permanent, and then you're yeah. just carrying all your stuff around your pocket. Yeah, that gets old. All right, so those are my two gear things, Jay. How, how what do you got for gear? 
Well, I got a couple updates. So I bought last year some uh, Sullivan tip downs. Ah, tip down. Yeah. And so I, I have not caught a fish on them yet, but I did use them. <laughs> They've been used. They're still like, virgin. They're still virgins. Is that what they you're are. saying? I like them. I like them. Um, they're easy to set up. And so what I like about them is, you know, you just use a regular rod. So I have no clue what a Sullivan tip down is. So you're going to have to explain it to me. Okay. So I don't even they, know what a tip down is. Like what, what is a tip down? So at least that's what I call them. No, um, I mean, you're probably right. I've heard people talk about them. I just, so it, just imagine, imagine like a teeter totters. Okay. Yeah. And so the fishing rod is balanced. Sure. And so it, it's on this, this kind of a swing set thing almost. And when, so the fish then can pull that, but it's in a holder. So the fish can, if you set it, depending on how you set the balance, the fish can take that line and pull it to where the rod tips almost at the water. Okay. So depending on, so basically like on the ones I have, the fish can move that rod like a whole foot before really it's going to feel much resistance because it's okay. right at that balance. And you can set up with a little more resistance or a little less. So the fish can take that minnow, take it almost a foot before it's going to hit a hard stop. Got it. And if all goes well, you know, it can't pull it down the hole because it's in this. Sure. And so on this one, then it has a flag. So when it tips down, it also slides forward okay. in the holder and the t- flag goes up. Why it's important that the rod shifts is if if you get a bite and it takes your minnow, you know, it's the tra- it's been sprung, right? So it sure. tips forward. So it's just not sitting there back on balance because you weren't watching it Okay. with the bait gone. Got it. So that's that's kind of the advantage of this design is that rod it's on a slide. So the, and also I'll put a picture. Sure, I'll get a picture. And so the holder that the rod is in is on a slide. So once it tips, it can't untip. Oh, interesting. And, and you see that's important because otherwise someone something could take the bait where you're not right. watching it, and then it would just come back to where it was, and you wouldn't you'd be like, oh, I, nothing's going on here. Sure. Right. Gotcha. So it gives you this indicator that something happened over there. But versus like a. I'm going to call it like a beaver dam traditional tip up. The resistance is probably there from the spool winding and stuff. Right? Yeah. This, yeah. This has exactly. no resistance basically. Yeah. There's very little resistance to no resistance on that. Gotcha. Um, and the other advantage is then obviously, you know, if you're using just a regular rod, fishing rod, which is always nice. Cause then you can reel them in like a regular, you can reel it in like a real fish instead of hand over hand craziness. Yeah. Not reel it in like, obviously a real fish if you're reeling it, but reel it in like you can reel it in versus hand line. Yes. Um, so I use that. So then I, I wanted to go back to my ice shack. So I bought that Kenai Pro Stealth. One that doesn't show up on radar. Stealth Pro. Yeah, it doesn't show up on any radar. And um, boy, it's it's I'm really struggling, much like you and your shuttle. Mm. Um, so this, you know, I love it was nice the first couple of weekend out with it because there was no snow. Sure. This time there was snow, and I it's no easier to pull than my other one. Oh. And that was bigger. It was bigger, but it was shallower. And I don't think it had, it spread the weight out more. Yeah. Because it, was, it wasn't a lot, a lot heavier, but it spread the weight out more. So it floated better on top of the snow. Hmm. Whereas this has a smaller footprint. So that sucker. So the guy I'm fishing with has an older version that has the shallow tub. So same eye snow, like his is digging in like two inches and mine's digging in like five inches. Oh so, boy. I mean, it worked my tail off <laughs> pulling that thing around. So, I don't know. I'm I'm not convinced it's any harder. Maybe it's a little harder to tow. I like the fact that it's insulated because I was heating it with just a little, little yeah. buddy, which was great. Like in, in two, a whole day of fishing, using the heater pretty much all day, you know, I go through one, one pound of propane. Yeah. Yeah. Those and are so, nice. that cuts down on propane um and then the storage is a problem mm. like a you know and i knew this but it the bars the, there's these two bars that run front to back the whole shack okay well i paid attention i only that seat is only ever at the first two inches of that slide sure you know i'm a tall guy but i'm never going to slide that seat all the way back my feet would be sticking out straight yeah. so the seat has four <laughs> feet of travel for no reason right no reason at all. Other than I bet it was easier to manufacture a slide that went front to back. Right. Because like you put two slap, you buy you put two bars on there and you go. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those bars and I'm gonna flip them sideways. So they're gonna run left to right on the shack, yep. right behind the front brace, which will put me a couple inches back from the edge edge of the seat. And I'll cut them off 
you know, I'm going to mount them side to side. So that seat yep. will slide. I can switch the uh, the brackets around so that seat would slide side to side. What yep. that should do then is open up three, you know, two feet plus behind me. That's just open. So then I can put buckets back there, like two nice buckets, and all my stuff can go just behind me without any without any distraction or sort of conflict with those bars. So that's that's my project this week. I'm gonna or this weekend. I'm gonna try to get to is to to remount those bars. Cool. All right. And uh, I know there's other ways to do it. People take the bars out and put stuff on a milk crate or this. Yeah. Um, I really like having a solid seat. I played with a, a just like a folding chair, different solutions yeah. in my other clam. And it just seems like stuff gets moved around and you're just flopping around. And, you know, my I, one I man just, came with like a, a case. It's like a plastic thing with a pad on top yeah. to sit on. But it's too short, so you sit down and your knees, you know, like yeah, your knees are too I, tall, and it's kind from of a, a mess. From a height perspective, sitting this thing, I love it. Yeah, like it's right at the right height. I can sit and I can actually still reach down and get to a hole without yeah. having to get up. Um, it's big enough yet where I was able to run. If I put two holes in, one in a, each corner, I could comfortably run two fishing lines sure. inside there. It gets a little dicey with the heater, trying not to get the fishing line into the heater. Yeah, yep. And I see why people put the heater behind them. I'm toying with that yet. Um, I think there might be enough room back there, but I also might. The trouble is when I open that, I flip it up more than yeah. go through the door. Well, if that heater's on and I flip yeah. that sucker up, if I get a little excited and I flip that up, I'm going to burn a big hole in the back of the whole thing. It's it's kind of weird and it's not still not as portable, but... I've been using my my ca- it's the Otter Cabin two person hub this year. Yep. I've been rocking that thing all year. It's been doing pretty good. Now you can't be like super mobile with it, right? You can't if you're going to move five feet. It's a pain in the butt. Sure, but you know when it's ten below and you're not going to be doing that anyways. It's pretty nice. Yeah, absolutely. But I have a one man. It's even smaller than yours, and I run into some of the same problems. You're like, there's just not enough space, right? It's tough. Well, and I think there's enough room in there. It's just a matter of kind of reorganizing. Yeah. Like, where do I, getting that sense of, as you use things longer, like, where does this go? Where's this thing yeah. spot? And, I, and this last weekend was better than the weekend previous, more comfortable in the shack. Kind of how it, how I set it up, you know, set it up. I feel like our two gear challenges isn't abnormal, right? Everybody does this. You go to the store, you're like, this is going to be the thing. This shuttle is going to solve all my problems. This new ice shack yeah. is the cat's meow. And then you start using it. You're like. It gear is hard. I mean, the, that's why gear is a big part of ice ice fishing. You know, being portable and moving, and yep. it, it's hard. And so, not everything works out that you buy, right? I mean, it, it, don't get too distracted. So the one the one thing I do like about the Kenai, which is why I'll probably end up keeping it, is the guy I fish with. He has a one man as well. So we both both those one man shacks fit in the back of my U. Sure. Yep. Just so like going somewhere is super easy, right? I yeah. throw mine in. I go to his house. We pick his up. We throw it in the back of the Yukon. Down the road we go. Yeah. Right. So it's not, you're not trying to stack stuff or put stuff on top of stuff. We, we fished in a two man last year together and, and it works fine. But you know, then if you, I take mine then half of his stuff's in his shack and yeah. you know, it just, it's, you can set the shacks up next to each other to where you can gab back and forth, <laughs> Yeah, but you still got your own space, yeah. you know, which is kind of totally. nice. Oh, I agree. That? Yeah. It's kind of nice. So let's see what else for gear. I don't think I have any, you know, this is just a little tip I'll share. Um, no one might ever run into it. So I thought my um, bubbler was dying because mm-hmm. even with new batteries, it would, it sounded like a, an old Chevy pickup with a bad spark plug. A good cam. Yeah. Had just, a good cam. Yeah. Had a good <laughs> cam in it. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> so here's how I figured it out. That night when I got home, I was going to, I had minnows left and we were going fishing the next day. So I was, I dug around and found a, a bubbler from an aquarium that my kid sure. had, but her fish died. So it was no longer in use, but I needed a stone for it. So I went to try to take the stone off my other bubbler and the thing took off. Oh, the stone was plugged. Interesting. The stone was completely goobered up. Huh. And so um, after that, it took off. So I bought new stones and it's running fine. So I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't either. Huh. So just mention to that to people. If you have a slow bubbler after you put new batteries in it, before you just assume it, it the thing's trash, 
take the stone off the end and see how, if it works and maybe you need a new stone thing. So I thought I'd share that. That's a good tidbit, Jay. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it just happened into it. I was first, I was mad. I, the stone disintegrated on me and then I was happy because <laughs> it saved me 20 bucks. <laughs> totally. You know, so I was going to go buy a new one. Wow. Cool. So there you go. All right. So we were going to talk a little bit about tip ups tonight, Jay. Yeah. So tip up fishing. So Jeff, what's your number one tip up trick? Um, I think a couple of things I've learned about tip ups over the time. First would be I, when I tip up for walleyes, I use a liter for fluorocarbon and a, yep. usually a hook, a smaller hook. And that's something that I I would just tie the hook right onto the, to the braid before. Mm-hmm. And that's something I do. I also use thinner braid. I, early on, there's that plasticky kind of braid. I don't even know it's plastic, but it feels like okay. plastic line. And don't get that. Get get like braid braid. <laughs> you know that sounds really weird, but well, they make kind of a specific line for tip ups. They do, but sometimes it's like this plastic stuff. Yeah, and it, no. And it, when it's cold, it, that gets the weird line. You know, it, it curls, and so I actually don't run as thick of a line. You know, because you go to tip up line, it'll be like this is sixty pound test line. Yeah, I sometimes get thinner caliber because I don't need sixty pound line. So. um so yeah, I mean, I think that's something I do different. I've been through a whole bunch of different kinds of tip-ups. Currently, I would recommend only two. I would recommend a beaver dam tip-up or that style of tip-up where the spool goes in the water. You've got some, Jason, you've got some cheaper ones that you've bought that work I fine. Do. And beaver dam ones are fine too. They're kind of what I always use, but those work fine. And then the only other one is there was Arctic they kind of clamshell. It's a piece of plastic and they fold in half and mm-hmm. everything's held inside. Those are the only two I really care to use these days. There's a lot of other ones out there and a lot of fancy ones. I was yep. at Shields this week and they had, um, Frable had this one called the Viper that was out and you go to Shields and there's a reason that like there still is piles and piles of these things on every tall shelf on every that is like, never a good sign like every tall shelf has one and they're discounted like 30 dollars, and they're still like 50 bucks you know but they're all over the place so don't fall for the gimmicky ones just get the basic ones the vipers were everywhere um i haven't had as much experience with those ifish pros but i kind of feel like the same way they're kind of there's a lot Man, to them people really love expensive. those things you know I know, but I don't see people actually using them. I don't know. I'm probably offending somebody now, but no, I'm the guy I fished with uses them. I mean, they oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, maybe people use them. I don't know. I, I'm old school, I guess. I'm sticking with the beaver dam or that Arctic one, which is basically a beaver dam that folds in half to hold your stuff. I okay. Mean, it's not really any different than that. So, so yeah, that's what I know. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. What, what, what's Jason? your go to northern rig right now, Jeff? For- Okay, so I have, and you and I have the same problem for Northern. So I don't know, it's probably not recent. We'll say 10 years ago. It's probably been that long. But before 10 years ago, I had a big ass hook that mm-hmm. I would hook into a big ass shiner or big yep. sucker and you'd shove it down there. And then somebody said, Have you ever used a quick strike rig? <laughs> right? mm-hmm. That is the. You have one line and then it has like a Y that's a heavy wire. And that goes to two treble hooks that you can hook your large sucker or shiner in the front and the back, or maybe your fun dog, whatever you happen to be fishing Mm -hmm. with. And, you know, the idea seems really good because then you're going to more likely to get that fish, especially pike. But every time I use one, like I just pulled one, it was tangled everywhere. No matter how I try to just harness those things, they just are a mess all the time. So I still probably use just a single big hook more often than not. Yep. Um, I do have quick strike rigs, but man, they just make a mess all the time. So that's that's what I would say. I mean, I don't do any kind of jigs or anything. It's usually just a big, like big hook, like bigger than you'd ever use normally for fishing and for a northern. And you just put your big hunk of meat on there and throw it down the hole. And that's how you catch northerns. Yeah, I, I've kind of gone away from those quick strike rigs too, because... They, they they catch the inside of the bag and the the tip up and your hand and the lure wrap. Yes, I've tried the little lure wraps yep. on them as well, and and then they it's just a mess. I don't know, I'm not sure you quite almost, sure how to do it. You almost have to cut them off and put them in the tackle box and then retie them every time. I yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm sure Sean has a way to do it. We should talk to him. So just this weekend, of course, I have a bucket with some tip ups and a strap ended up in the in the bucket, the five gallon bucket. Oh God. And so then I pull because a strap I use on my sled to tie down my ice shack and stuff when I'm pulling oh, it out. Man. And man. I've got the quick strike rig through a a ratchet strap, but not ratchet, you know, just the friction mm-hmm. kind of yeah. ones. And it's through there and it's all just a mess. So I had to take a pair of pliers and just cut the tips of the oh, no. of the treble hooks off to get it out of the strap. It would not come out, right? Like no. it was never coming out. It was all the way through yeah. the strap. Yeah. No, so it wouldn't. That's what happens to quick strike rigs. And I try the wraps. I try things. They just, they come loose. Things fly around. Yeah. It's just a mess. Yeah. No, I, I'm rocking all big hooks. So on mine um, right now, I've got leaders on all of them. And so depending on if I'm fishing with a small, like a fathead or a bigger hook for Northerns, that's kind of, I've got a cup one set up with a smaller hook for a fathead minnow for walleye. And then one set up with a bigger hook for Northern. And I tell you, I've been rocking these HT ice fishing polar. Yeah. I've got two of them. I've had them now. This is my third season with them. And Jeff, they still work great. They are not like they, the grease has stayed nice and, and good. It has, they haven't gotten tough to pull. Um, I just looked them up because I, I, they're anywhere from 20 to 50. They're 15 bucks at Shields. A lot of times you'll find them for $20 at the damn gas station. They're just, they're a cheap piece of plastic, but the, I, they've been working great. And for 15 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, your beaver dams are nice. They're classic, super classic, your beaver dam brand ones, but they're like 50 bucks. Oh, they're way more than that. And, they're, they're like, they're like 80 bucks. I think. And, Jay. and quite frankly, at 15, 20 bucks, if the thing, like if the grease goes bad and it just quits working, I mean, chuck the thing and buy another one. No, yeah, I agree. You know, if you, if I get three or four years out of something like that for, for what they cost, I'll, I'll, probably just get rid of it if it quits working versus, you know, taking it apart and greasing the shaft and trying to do all that now. Okay. So um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of wrong on the price point on those, Jay. Uh, here is a beaver dam for 35 bucks. The beaver dam brand, the beaver dam, ba- De- beaver dam brand, Charlie Roger tip up 35 bucks. At Man, Fleet I haven't Farm. seen them for 35 bucks in a long time. 39 bucks at Shields. Okay. Uh, Cabela's is eight, $90. Don't go there and buy that one. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i, don't I guess know. it depends on where you're looking at them but but yeah so i mean wow why is this it's like they went on sale well this one says 54 dollars now so but i'm seeing yeah, there's some shields website right now that's 39.99 there's some big stinking sales going on right now so yeah i'm just looking at this like the beaver dam original tip up 28 bucks at blaine's fleet farm that i would go that's, beaver dam for i that would difference. Go, i would go do that for that price i would go yeah I'm just telling you what I've been using and, and yeah. um, I haven't had a reason to kick them out of the, t- the tackle box or the t- rod bag yet because they work. No, I, I like, um, I like the beaver dam ones. Now I have one that I got for Christmas when I was 12 mm-hmm. and that's a long time ago and it still works. Yeah. Usually they yeah. work as long as your buddy doesn't break them, but generally yeah. they work yeah. other than that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You can fix them though. I have some parts and I looked up a YouTube thing. Uh-huh. So they're actually soldered together. My goodness. So you have to take like a propane torch and heat up the end of it. And then the shaft comes out. Okay. And then you can lube them up or in this case, this one's broken. And then you put it back together and you use solder just to solder it back together. Huh. So I'm going to be doing that. Some repairs on one of mine. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, I, I think Beaver Dam brand is the industry stand, right? That that's that one's been around forever. It it does a good job. Um those little HT ones, I just think they're adequate and they do the job if you're oh, lo- I would agree. Them. I I would not I would not you know get rid of it if it, if it was around me. I'd use it. Yeah. So a couple of things just on that I've learned. Um you just have to really know, really double check that grease when it gets cold to make sure that that line pulls easy. If you have resistance a lot of resistance on that spool that you're defeating the purpose of the tip up. Yeah. That fish, when it takes that line, that thing needs to spool very, very freely so it can take it and swim away. If it feels tension on that, if it's finicky at all, it's just going to drop it. It's just going to drop it. It's going to leave. So if you're getting a lot of missed flags, like the flag goes up, but no fish flag goes up, but no fish check that tension and be honest with yourself. Cause sometimes you're like, Dang it. Good enough. 
because it's cold out and your hands are cold and you don't want to set up a whole nother tip up just speaking from experience because i i fight this mental game as well sometimes you're like good enough and uh man if 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 you're getting any pressure at all on that line you need to you need to reevaluate or uh, grease the thing or throw it away and get a different one. um yeah and there's beaver dam grease i was just talking about i have yeah. some i'm gonna tear that one apart that's kind of damaged and do that I would say, though, the only caveat where I kind of disagree with you is it depends on what you're fishing for. If you're fishing for walleyes with tip-ups, absolutely. You're not going to get away with the resistance. I mean, if you're fishing for northerns, sometimes they just care. I yeah, mean, oh, big, I would agree that. I would agree with that. that a big northern going to whack it, and there's a little resistance. It's just going to do its thing. Not always. Or a bass, even. Even bass that we've caught before. Yeah. Bass really get sluggish in the middle of winter, they do. too. But walleyes will definitely, I, I run a, a floral leader with my hook on a tip up. I mean, we've yeah. caught, we caught a bunch of, not a bunch, we caught several bass and I have in years past too, in yeah. the winter, just on a tiny tungsten, you know, a tiny little jig and, and a waxy tells oh, you yeah. how much they slow down. In the, you know, yeah. in the summer, you catch them on the biggest, most obnoxious, <laughs> craziest looking thing you can throw. But in the sun, in the winter, they, they slow way down. Well, and all the fish, we're at like about maximum slowness right now. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would agree. Um, let's see. So Jeff, the heavy line with the leader, same thing I'm doing. Hooks, make sure those hooks stay sharp. I usually been what using you use the, for weight, Jay. I mean, I just use a couple split shots up okay. a couple feet from the from the bait. So I've been using those clip-on sliding weights. And so I put it above, I put a a um you have your floral leader for walleyes, uh-huh. your hook. I have a swivel. And then above the swivel, I put my weight. So oh, I have too there. much of a leader on probably for that. Okay. Gotcha. But yeah, no, that makes sense too. If you only go like a two foot leader, yep. then you can put that. Yeah. Well, cause then you're, you're not damaging the, the line. That's yeah. not a bad idea, Jeff. I'll give you that one. And then the other thing that um, I guess I used to use all kinds of line markers and stuff. I just use my flasher to set them now. Yep. Me too. I don't mess around with like line. I, I just set nope. up with my flash one time, time. Br- bring the flasher out, yeah. mark them, set them. Yeah. And done. Yeah. I don't mess around with weights anymore. I used to like, you know, we used to carry a weight, that big lead weight clip on for everything. And that's what yep. you did, but yep. And then you put the little tiny bobbers. Oh, that was fun. Yes. Little They're tiny line markers and they- thread or bobber stops or all yeah. kinds of stuff I've done. But now I just stick my Vexlard or whatever flasher you got down the hole and get it where I want it and then leave it. I suppose if you were hot and heavy and you were catching tons and tons of fish, maybe you'd want to like, you know, mark it cause you're going up and down, but usually I just bring my flasher and set it. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, I did try and it did with no avail. We had some really aggressive sucker minnows. And so I tried, uh, who gave us that tip to cut the minnow, the little minnow oh, tail yeah. off. Um, yep. The singer guy. The bro. But, no, no, Charlie Darmer. That was Charlie Darmer's trick, wasn't hmm. it? If your minnow's too active, cut the tail off so it's yeah. Down. You just trim the tail so you swim yeah. slower. Tried that. Yeah. That didn't work. He was just an unhappy minnow. <laughs> what are Charlie's up to? We should get him back on the show. Uh, he just is. He's been doing some. He shot a. He's just been. He shot a new music video up at Red Door recently. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we should have Charlie. We gotta get we gotta get an update on Charlie. We should have him back on the show. Or parts of a music video. I'm not sure of the details. I happened to be up there, but I couldn't make it out. Were you in the music video, Jeff? I was not. I had maybe the opportunity to do it, but oh, I didn't man. get there. Well, we were fishing, and as much as I want to be in a music video, I want to fish. Fishing time is like precious. I know. It is it is and super like, precious. And and as much as I want to do other things, like go be in a music video about ice fishing, which I love to do. I I'd rather ice fish. I yeah. Know. It's, it's, it's like you're in the wheelhouse, you're fishing, you're happy, you're listening to music, you're having a good time. Do you want to get in your car, drive to shore, drive down to wherever they were doing? Yeah. I just, I don't yeah. Know. It was so, cool, but there. did I give you an update on that little fit? Did I ever talk about that little fishing tournament thing I was in? The game of inches? Yeah. Well, it's not the game of inches, but it's, it's like our own a version, game of inches, our own version of that. <laughs> Basically. So we came, we, we took second place. We got second oh, place, nice. which, which is not what we wanted. You Man, want we fished, place. we fished hard, but we could not pull it off. Like we fished four solid days, Jeff, um, pretty much sun up to sundown and wow. just could not put any big fish on the ice. But you know what we did catch? What? Caught a trout. Really? Yep. 
through the ice? Correct. In Iowa? Correct. Wow. So they have some of these put and take ponds where yeah. they stock little rainbow, yeah. 12 inch rainbow yeah. trout. Yep. Uh, little eater sized trouts. Yeah. And, um, and I'll tell this story. So we go to this pond and uh, we had got some intel. We knew it had been stocked the week before because they had a family fishing event the weekend before. And so we thought, okay. And they stock it once a year. I thought, okay, this is the time to go, right? So weekend yeah. after the weather's been crappy all week, there's got to be some trout left. We needed a trout. And so we had some intel. The intel was basically fish shallow, fish shallow. So we're wow, like, okay. That's, I mean, so, it's intel, I guess, but not yeah, a lot. <laughs> well, basically the intel was that the fish just swim around in a circle. Hmm. Because they're used to stock ponds. Sure. Okay. They just swing around in a circle. So we go and we drill a hole like the, the thing's like 40 foot deep. It's an old quarry. We we fish like, you know, 15 feet, nothing, right? Go into 10 feet, nothing. Seven feet, nothing. Like five feet, nothing. Well, this is time to go. So we're leaving and there were some holes drilled like close in an area. Like, well, let's just try to set up on these. So the guy I was with, buddies with, I was with, sets up. And he goes like, this is two feet of water. He's like, fine, I'm just going to try it for a minute. And sure. Basically, with the shack over top, you're now sight fishing. Like, yeah. you can see the bottom. And all of a sudden, he goes, what the heck was that? And you're like, holy crap, three, four trout just swam by. Oh, my gosh. And so, you'd sit there, and all of a sudden, you're watching down the hole, and they just, they'd come by, and they'd bump your lure, and they'd just shoot off again. Huh. Or they'd just, like, three of them would just go, like, just zoom, zoom, zoom. they just zoom right through. And they they were swimming around in circles in, like, two feet of water. <laughs> And then they go away for a while. And then right. I, I think if you timed like their speed, if someone, if you could do math and you knew the circumference of that pond yeah, and how quick they were moving, you could have set a stopwatch probably for when they'd come back and it's they'd like, swing through again. It's like a NASCAR race, short track <laughs> racing. With trout. <laughs> so we caught our, he, he, my buddy caught, I had, I got bumped a couple of times, but I didn't get one hooked and he caught one. And so we packed up and left because we Measure. needed one. It's like 11 and a half inch trout. So, so you came in second. How many teams were there? Four. Huh. So, yeah. Well, it's not. It's nothing to write home about. I just wanted to give an update on it. But we had a lot of fun. Good. Um, I got one more story to tell on that. So we went up to Clear Lake, and I've only been to Clear Lake a couple of times. <laughs> and I hope he doesn't listen to this show. Oh, oh well, you want him to, but and you know. and uh, and so we're like, should we drive on the lake? Shouldn't we? You know, because we had had all this warm up. And sure. we knew some people were driving the lake, but we didn't really know how many. We stopped at the bait shop and they're kind of like, well, yeah, people are driving out, but don't go this way and don't go this way and no this way. Like, okay. So we decided, well, we're just going to fish this one spot and we'll we'll park at the the city or the state park and we'll, we'll just hop over the hill and we'll, we'll be where we want to fish. Sure. So there's no reason to drive. And where we park, you can only see the little lake. You couldn't see the big lake from the parking lot. And so little lake, we look over, there's one truck out, right? One truck. So we're like, well, we'll walk. Yeah. Okay. So we cut across the park up this hill and down this hill. And when you get down the hill or halfway down the hill, you can now see the whole lake. And it's like Mille Lacs. Like there's <laughs> fish houses out there. There's cars everywhere. And there I am dragging my shack. <laughs> and I look at my buddy and I'm like, just keep dragging. It's like, yeah. well, here we are. So we did. I drugged that stupid shack all over. Why people are zooming by me on four wheelers and cars. I'm just out there dragging 18 my wheelers. Dragging Trains. my sh- yeah, dragging my shack around, <laughs> monster you know, trucks, and there was like eighteen inches of ice. But yeah, but this is what's weird. So like the ponds, we've been fishing ponds within a half hour of this lake, yeah. and every one of them was like four inches of ice, five Oof. inches of ice. Uh, the the pond we fished Sunday, I bet we were probably on three inches of ice. Ooh, wow! So like really minimum ice depth, right? Yeah. So you can see, I understand completely. Like I wasn't completely like, yeah, you're you're ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you might be right. Yeah, I'd probably push it more than some would. So I'll go with you. You're being more conservative, and that's yes. okay. You know, but no, we could have driven the Yukon <laughs> anywhere we wanted within reason on that. Wow. Um, so, but I got a workout. And so there we're go. leaving. We're leaving. And there was a whole family, like a whole bunch of Amish folks there. Sure. There's a lot of Amish around. So they, they were all fishing. They, they had a trip up there and they were fishing. And so we were chatting with them. And then on, I'm pulling my shack out and I, on the ice, I was chatting with this young man and we get to this hill and this hill's a substantial hill for a middle-aged fat guy pulling an ice shack full of all his crap. Right. <laughs> and I was prepared for the hill. I knew, I mean, I came 
enjoyed it on the way down, but on the way up, I just knew I was going to, you know, it's about a three step and a pole and a three step yep. and a pole. And eventually I get to the top and I didn't ask this guy for help, but he's like, Hey, do you, you know, you want me to give you a hand? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know? So, so he grabs that thing and I felt like a toddler trying to keep up with him. I was out of breath at the top just because I was jogging along, trying to keep up with this kid pulling the shack up this hill. I, and I call him a kid, but I bet he was, you know, I probably in his late twenties. Sure. Right. But an Amish, Amish man, you he know, just, and he's used like to here labor and yeah, he didn't even, he, and he got the biggest kick out of it. Of course I told him, thank you. And he goes, you all right. I'm like, I'm fine. He goes, I should have just had you sit on it. I said, that would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, God. So, yeah. So he probably wouldn't even noticed if I had sat on the thing and he pulled it up the hill. But it was funny. But you know what? I got up that hill because my my buddy was already at the top of the hill, and he thought, "Well, I'll wait here for Jason to climb that hill." Yeah. And he says he was pretty surprised when I showed up in about thirty seconds. <laughs> like I had a little help. Of course, I'm gasping, uh, I'm gasping for air because you know I'm in bibs and, oh, and yeah. boots and been fishing all day since six 30 in the morning. And, and then I just ran up a hill with an Amish guy. <laughs> so, but God bless him for getting me up the hill. I didn't have a heart attack. That's good. It's good. But it was a lot of fun. I suppose that's the, that could be, a, could have been a legend, but could have um, been, but, but, but we do have a, a guest coming on here, Jay. We do. I think it's time for that, isn't it? It is. I think it is. So we have Steve Olson will be joining the show to talk about his ice hole heater. Which fits nicely into our, our uh, tip-up topic we had earlier. It does. It does. Let's listen to Steve. Today on the Hardware Fishing Show, we have Steve Olson. He is an inventor of outdoor products and a metal artist. Welcome, Steve. Hey, thanks, guys, for having me. Thanks Steve, for being on the I, show. I, I do think we need to clear one thing up before we get too far in. You're not yeah. related to the other Olies that we know, correct? Oh, I, you know, we are prolific, so it's very possible. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as we know, you're, you're not. As far as you know, no. There's other group of Olies <laughs> that we we also associate with. Because if yeah. I don't know if you've listened to many of the shows, but but uh, we have some Olies that we deal with, some Olsons that we We have Olsons and Olies big olies and, and big ole, little ole, old <laughs> yeah. ole. I don't know. Too many yeah, we got lots of olies. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So, uh, Steve, can you tell us a little bit how you got started and uh, what you're doing? Yeah. So, uh, when I first started my business, I started doing cabin artwork, and that's all metal fabrication. So, uh, and then it turned into now the ice hole heater, which is kind of an add in because I was always doing the um, uh, ice fishing uh, tournaments, selling my artwork uh, in the winter. And then you know, I've always fished them too. And then I came up with this idea and here we are. <laughs> so, and then I ran into Jeff at a, uh, at one of the, um, uh, uh, fishing. Re- yeah. We were at a fishing, fishing shows where we ran into each other. So, yep. Yep. So just describe this thing for us. Cause I, I haven't seen it in real, in real life yet. Jeff hasn't sent me. So why, why don't <laughs> well, you, I, I'd have to yeah, send can... you, a, so, but, but, or get, get you one, but, uh, uh, I've called it the Pac-Man. I've called it a lot of different things, the hot donut, whatever. Um, I, I like the hot donut. That's yeah, a good name. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, it, it's really that simple. It's, it's, uh, it started out as just a, a can and that was my first version just to get it started. And that kind of got it going to where you get the airflow and all the other stuff to get the, to get the actual heater to work. And then uh, the last couple months have been dialing it in on what people said for what they wanted for feedback, right? Like they wanted it to cover the whole hole. They wanted it to, and then I was like, well, I want to be able to fish, fish through it. I mean, uh, so basically one of the reasons I made it is because I fished the fishing tournaments and I was just at JC's uh, yesterday or on, uh, set, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yesterday. Right. Yeah. It was <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Yep. yep. I've been out on the ice all day. So, <laughs> so <laughs> All day yesterday, all day today, but, but, uh, um, yeah. So I wanted to be able to fish JC's without having to bring charcoal cans or be able to fish the entire thing. And, uh, that was really where in my mind, where I was going through the design process on what I wanted it to do. And then I also wanted it to, you know, I've frozen in tip ups and it's a pain and sometimes I won't even fish them. So I wanted to kind of design it to do all those things. And it turns out to do even a little bit more than that. And it's been awesome i mean basically a hot donut's the easiest way to put it well we just i just ran it today for you know 18 degrees below zero is 18 hours i'm like this is awesome and it keeps on getting better this is so new that 
uh, the more I fish it and the more guys ask me questions about it, I just keep on, you know, Hey, you asked me a question. I'll, I'll test it out and then, uh, keep on making little tweaks and yeah, it's going along great. So that's basically what I describe it as. It's a hot donut and it, uh, it's really simple. It just works. So. so, so how does it operate? So yeah, it's, uh, so I've been, you can use it, uh, certain temperatures, you don't need anything. It just works like a standard, like the, the thermal cover, right? Uh, it just gives you that air gap. It's a, it's a hollow, it's hollow. And then when you get down below certain temperatures, say below 20, you throw a couple hand warmers in there, whatever you want. I've been using, um, uh, the iron ones, like the hot, hand, uh, hot hands or grabbers or whatever. Uh, okay. I've also been using Zippo ones. Uh, guys have asked if you could use battery ones. I'm sure you could. <clears throat> uh, working on that, uh, I kind of like the idea that uh, what I'm finding is that the the hand warmers, just your standard hand warmers, they're 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 kind of foolproof. Like they just work. You can put them in there. You don't have to touch it. Like if I would have left my uh, tip up out today for 18 hours and just came back. Like I was just sitting in my ice shack all day and then it was time to go. I would have been able to just pull it out. I wouldn't have had to think about it at all. So that's really what uh, going back and forth between the two. And then that's just how many do you put in there? You know, sometimes you put two or three. Sometimes I, I was running four today because it's cold. Hmm. So the Zippo ones work in there too, though. They don't run out of oxygen or anything. No. Yeah, they do. Uh, that's a like bobber fishing, like the fishing, the tournament yesterday, I used the Zippo ones. So we did two. Uh, one of my, uh, my, well, funny story about that. My cousin-in-law, uh, four-time winner of the JC championship. He told me five. His friends corrected me yesterday. But uh, he he fished, uh, he put five or six hand warmers in there, and then you can just jig all day. I used the Zippo ones, and I've used them both ways. Those ones, for tip-ups, I would use the standard, like, iron hand warmers, like the hot hands for uh, jigging and stuff. I like the Zippo ones, but, you know, and you can you can do it either way. They they both really work well. So I know when and we went out, um, you know, we ran into Steve. We we first met at that ice fishing show or a couple ice fishing shows. I kind of go to a lot of them, but then we were up uh, at Reeds in Onamia. I just had to get some bait, which they didn't have any. But we just ran into each other at the bait shop. You know, I'm like I'm walking out, and Steve's walking in. And he goes, "Hey, Jeff," and I'm like, "Oh, hey, Steve." And <laughs> And I don't know if this has ever happened to me before, but then we went ice fishing later together. It was, it was pretty hey. cool. <laughs> it was, but, but you were, you were trying out them that night too. And it was pretty cold out. It was, I don't know, remember somewhere between zero and 20. It was cold, but not, not as cold as it is like today. It's, and you had the Zippo ones and the, ha- and the hand warmer ones out there both. And you were t- testing those out. So I know you're out there trying different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it, it, as I, Cause again, this is season two. And by the time I got done, it literally hit a year. I just got, um, it just hit a year, uh, like two days ago. And then it's only been about three months with the new design and the new design is blowing everything away. I mean, I, 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 it's works great. I mean, and, and, and as I fish it more and now I'm getting it dialed in and I'm just like, Whoa. So, and, and it really is, it really is that simple. I mean, it, you would think it'd be a little, you know, I for as simple as it is, it works way better than you would think. And, and it, and, and it continues to impress me. I like, even like today I was like, well, maybe I'll go for 14 hours. Maybe I'll go for 18 hours. And then I'm like at 19 hours. And I'm like, uh, we'll save 24 hours for the next one. That's what <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, I, uh, I know I saw too, you were using, um, you know, I originally thought of it as a tip up tool, like a tool, right? Because you you'd put this; it's kind of rubber and circular, right? It, it's uh, cir- covers the hole around the hole, and then it's rubber. It's red. I don't know if they're all red. Are they always red? Oh yeah. Oh, big news! Uh, uh, another hard water show exclusive besides eighteen hour runtime is there. I got three new colors coming too. So it because it, uh, guys have asked me about black ones, and then I'll have uh, uh, I've got some neon colors coming too. So and yeah, cool. it's a. And it's a, it's a hard rubber or it's a, it's a, it's, it's a medium soft kind of rubber. It's a, it's, it's a more like a nylon rubber and, uh, basically indestructible. Uh, uh, and it stays still flexible to even like today, it just pops right out of the hole, even if it freezes in a little bit. So, yep. Yeah. And I, I like too, how you, um, you had a iFish pro, which I hadn't thought of that. I haven't really used one, but I've seen them where they have the base and because the line's out of the water and it worked really well. You're trying that out. And then a thermal tip up, you know, that covers the whole hole. It worked for that one too. So you had a couple different things. Yeah. Okay. And um, the, you know, 
at, like I said, as I go through that, like our guys with jaw jackers or they came out with this jigging jaw jacker. Right. And I think what their point was, was that, uh, or hit, what they were excited about was you, you're, you're jigging that jaw jacker. And if that freezes in, I don't know if they set or not, I haven't used them, aren't, but he was excited about it. He's Ooh. like, I think we're great. So cool. Well, awesome. Well, I have one that's red, so I look forward to a new color, but I have a red <laughs> one. I've, I've tried it out. It works pretty well. So, uh, and we use it that day on the ice when we, we've ice fish, fished together um, out, of course, by the red door. <laughs> we, yeah. we met up there, but. Uh, the day, right. Yeah. You know, up here on the pond. Yes. Uh, I think we caught a couple little ones. It wasn't, wasn't exactly awesome fishing, but we had a good time. So is it, does it have a, like a slide in it, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it, it, it it's so what it what it is if you the easiest way to and kind of how i came up with the design is you remember those little coin purses that that used to be like nylon and they look like a clam and you push yeah, them. yeah i still open. have one of those i use yeah. those yeah <laughs> it's the same it's the same material as that and it's the same okay. idea like so it it the flaps open up and you can just put the hand warmers in there right and then it's got a couple ventilation holes so that you have enough air going through there so that the uh you can got keep it the whole thing burning yep and that's how it works cool very cool so i know we talked a lot about the ice hold heater because that's your the newest thing in your yes. you know in your world <laughs> but um i also you also have i want to talk a little bit more about your art business and your metal business and how how you got started in that because you have it's called cabin customs you have a whole another website that you do for that so tell us a little bit about that yeah so uh 2017 i started uh, the artwork business i had a bunch of ideas actually funny thing about starting you know as, as you go through and i've told these stories many times it's actually my backup plan my original business was some boating stuff and it totally it was going to be deep it was going to be i had all i bought all the equipment with the idea that if that one didn't take off or didn't go then i'd go with my artwork and it really came down to you know in minnesota we got you know fourteen thousand lakes right but you can only get cool stuff for what 10 of them 20 maybe and that was my concept i mean even like malax you can get malax stuff but how much really cool stuff is out there so i wanted to make take metal artwork take some of these new cool coatings and all this other stuff and heat treating and um yeah i mean i i as far as like starting a business it's similar you know I, I drove around all the state parks and all these little art shops and everybody wanted to buy the stuff i was making i'm like sweet so here we go um and i've been so that and again, that all that skill and all that other stuff and metalworking and fabricating, welding and, you know, CNC, it all plays into exactly why, you know, the ice hole heater is here, too. But it's 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 great stuff. I mean, it's all over the place. It's all over the world at this point, too. So that's it. That's that's kind of like a passion project like that is totally hands on. You got to, you know, I make every mm -hmm. piece start, start to finish and um, I make some really cool stuff. A ton of custom lakes. I've done hundreds of custom lakes and. Uh, it's really funny. I'll go do shows and people ask me, I bet you don't have this lake. And I'm like, well, it just so happens it's in my box back here and I pull it out and they just go, seriously. I go, yeah. Do you want a custom one or you want this one? You know, so it's funny how that all works. So awesome. Oh, that's great. I, it's a whole other aspect of, of fishing. I never think of art and, and outdoors and fishing that go together, but well, you got to have candy for your castle. That's what I call it for the, you know, that, that, <laughs> that there's, there, I don't know how many of my bobbers and daredevils and, uh, you know, uh, lakes are sitting there out on the ice right now. Like, uh, cause again, that's also like, even from selling it at like the fishing tournaments and stuff like to that too, that's like the entire progression. And then if you're like, well, does this guy like to, you know, go outdoors and do this stuff like i've literally that's all i do now so it's crazy it's, it's awesome uh, but it, it, it's like uh it's uh one of those things and then like during the summer the summer gig you know uh it, doing art shows and everything you get to go around you get to meet all people you get to tell fishing stories you get to go to all these new cool places and uh that's the super fun part about the the artwork side of it um uh is doing all that so the yeah <laughs> cool. Sorry very cool yep so what's your favorite fish to target and why do you like them oh oh this is a this is a uh so growing up all we did was walleye fish because we, uh our place on wax and it was like all we did and as i got into my own stuff then it switched to smallies and like chasing smallies all the time and then uh now like uh, and i'm not you know now it's like 
smally fishing, then you run into muskies all the time, especially on Malax. More into that, but still when it comes back to it, it's still walleye. Like even though I try to like step away from it, every time I go out walleye fishing and especially catch a couple for the uh uh for for dinner and everything like that, that I mean that truly is the favorite. But you're asking that's like I said, that's a hard question. Like the most frustrating, muskies. And uh, also maybe with the ones I, you know. And the, the, the stories, muskies for sure. <laughs> oh, cool. So tell us a little bit more about, I'm uh, Jason or I have not fished the JC, the big JC's tournament. Obviously I've seen it in the paper. I've seen pictures. So uh, tell us a little bit more about that. How is that? What's that experience like? I mean, it's, it's always, it's always interesting. I mean, they had over, they have 13,000 people, almost 12, five, they said this year. Wow. I, I looked at, I looked at, so and as I, and I've been fishing it probably since I was in my mid twenties, I'm 40 now. And, um, uh, not only do I know the guy who's, you know, like, uh, like I said, my cousin's husband is, has been very successful, honestly, in it. And, uh, now I fish with him, he knows the spots, but, but, <laughs> but like, I called him up, I had to, to pin me, where are you at? Where are you at? I'm coming out there. It's just fun. And I've done it different ways. I've, I've, uh, done it where you stay in a hotel up there. And then they got a bus and they come pick you up. Like that's, that's, it's more of a, like an event. Like once you get through the first half mm-hmm. hour of fishing, the fish are pretty spooked, I think in most cases. <laughs> so, so like, if you don't pull one up right away, uh, it, it dies down, especially in the first hour. And this is kind of the same thing with like fishing for ducks too. It's just kind of an experience. Also, you know, there's not many days you get to wake up and you say, well, I get to go fishing today and I might walk away with a new truck uh kind of deal right and then like this year i thought it was amazing i mean it was a 13 year old kid that won the yeah, truck i saw that yeah That's so wow. cool yeah 13 year old boy god what was it, yep. it was like a just a tank of a walleye it was like eight pound or something uh, nine seven nine seven nine seven. Oof. Oof. nine seven yeah and when i by the time i got there i was like nine seven i'm like well i don't know if the truck's coming this way <laughs> So does the truck, <laughs> is the truck the biggest fish or biggest walleye? Like, cause I know there's tons of like 30th fish or 2000th fish or whatever, you know, like there's all kinds of different categories. So biggest fish gets the truck, right? And okay. there's always first year of the biggest fish, but I think this year they saw the kid pull it up and everything. It's so funny. That's the, that's the other thing you get up to there. You start to learn like the tactics and like the stories and like, you know, all year over year and people talk about it. So it's like, it's like one of those things. It's like the super, I mean, you'd hate to say like, it, it, it's, it's just. What am I trying to say here? Yeah, the kid went in it. I was like, awesome. And I didn't know he was 13. All of a sudden, you're like nine, seven. You hear it over the thing. When I got home, started thawing out. I'm like, oh, let's see who won. I'm like, oh, 13 year old kid. And uh, also, you know, I'm a Ford guy and he decided on the Ford. So I like him even more. And I know Jeff, you are too. We joked about that before. Yeah, too. We, we both went fishing and we both had Ford pickups and something seemed yeah. right about that. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll grow out of it as he gets older. But at least it's, at least it's free. If I was 13 and I wanted a brand new truck, I'd be like, oh my goodness. So that that that's that that's just the fun part about it. But overall, like I said, years, there's different ways to do it. I've snowmobiled there. You I've walked out there. You can put your ice castle out there if you get out there a day before. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways to do it. This year, now that I live up north, it was like, well, I'm just gonna do the easy thing, pop up there. It's 40 minutes or whatever, 45 minutes. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Go in there, jump on the bus, walk out there, easy peasy. And it is, it is a fun time. It is is definitely fun. I have fished it when it's been like 15, 20 below. It's, it's still fun. And again, the ice hole heater wouldn't be here if it wasn't a 15, 20 below ice fishing tournament. Right. So I always look at life that kind of that way too. It's just like, you know, it's the experience and like, well, I don't know what I need until I know I need it kind of thing. So, and then I go out there today and I'm like, man, this is working exactly as, or yesterday I was like, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. So I, I always thought it's fun. Also, I think it's really fun to get out there with family. I mean, I, I'll probably see, some of these people that, you know, I know my, my cousin-in-law, I either see him, I see him once or twice in a year, right? And the fishing tournaments are one of those things. So there you go. That's cool. Yeah. And we talk about that sometimes too. And, you know, it's obviously we all want to just go out there and have the adventure of the year and catch the giant fish and that kind of stuff. But, yeah. you know, it's a social thing a lot too, you know, getting out with your buddies or it's the reason to get together. It, it, it's really important. So what's, uh, what's up next for you, Steve? What are you working on? You working on anything else? There's top secret stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, now, good. Uh, so, good. Like, uh, so I just went through this whole endeavor of, you know, just like with fabricating and doing all my artwork and stuff like that. I went through this whole endeavor of figuring out how I was going to continue to produce this new product. 
And then now that I got this figured out, I got a bunch of cool stuff and some of it I'll keep under wraps a little bit, but I mean, more stuff towards fishing. And then I also got some cool summer stuff, always more artwork and everything like that coming. I mean, I got, you know, it's one of those things is you're like an inventor and then you got to like focus. Like I, I wake up every day. It's like, okay, like, oh, I got all these ideas. No, 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 no. We got three more colors, ISO heaters to do today. Let's just get those done. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you kind of, you broke the seal, right? You know how to take a concept and move it into production and the market. And now that you've, you've cracked that nut at some level, right? Uh, sky's the limit. Your first go may not work out, but I will tell you that you, what you figure out from what you, what, from uh, what you learn in that process, it just keeps on snowballing as you go. So yeah, that's exactly it. Like I'll tell you that from any product or from experience, like this one has been going, um, Awesome. I mean, it's going, going good. So there, there you go. Like, uh, some of the other ones I, I've been, and it's still not, you still got to work at it and everything like that, but, um, it's just, you know, I tell anybody, if you've got an idea, just go for it, you know, and you'll see what happens. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> so. cool. That's cool. Well, Steve, you ready to tell us a nice fishing legend? The one that sticks out in my mind the most. And again, this is another Mac story. I got, Maybe, maybe two. And I, I, I don't know how quick you want me to be, but you can tell two. Probably... We won't, we won't, we won't argue. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. oh, so, you know, growing up, so this was the eighties, probably it had to have been, uh, cause we were in all the eighties, some suburban, and we always used to just go fish on, you know, be go fish out on the ice and everything like that. And then one day, uh, storm came up, we were out in the middle, middle of the lake. I have no idea. All I know is I remember my dad going and we're buzzing across the lake in this old suburban and him going, hold on. And the only thing I remember, we must have went over a pressure ridge at 40 miles an hour. Uh, like, like all I remember is flying from the back of the suburban through it into the captain seats and then smashing my face on the, on the front of the dash. And my dad saying, the first thing he said was don't tell your mom. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 so you know, and, 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 uh, that, that one stuck like that one, like that's one of the ones that stuck with me. And of course, you know, I, I don't know if I still have that scar or not, but, but that was just kind of like, you know, one of those old going across the lakes and there, there's, there, there's so many as far as like catching fish or fishing tournaments. And oh, it, it's, it's, it's all, it's always one of those things where, Oh, I got one more too. Um, my Sweet. so I grew up in the cities. And we always used to put our, our, our uh, ice house out on Medicine Lake. We'd go fishing all the time. Uh, I left one weekend to go snowmobiling and my buddy calls me up and uh, he sends me a picture on one of these, one of the original picture phones. So it's this little tiny picture of this, of this. <laughs> Can you believe how big this bass is that I caught out of your ice house? And he's kind of giving me a hard time. I go, dude, that's not a bass. That's a crappie. And it was like a 17 or 18 inch crappie. And he's oh like, my gosh. yeah. It was so big. It didn't even have spots on it almost. <laughs> Holy so, crap. Yeah. And you're like, and, and that was, that was one of the funny ice fishing stories. Cause you know, we go out there and we always did pretty decent on crappies and he pulled that thing out of there and that's right in the middle of the city. So that was one of my, that's, that's the ice fishing story that I was a part of. Cause I'm like, I'm like, that's not a bass. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, that is a good one. I like that one. Well, that's cool. Well, Steve, thanks for being on, on the show. And before we let you go, we always like to say, you know, where can our listeners find you? Where where do they find ice hole heaters and your your artwork? Well, so ice hole heaters is easy. It's ice hole heaters dot or ice hole heater dot com. So uh, also Facebook cabin customs uh, ice at ice hole heater for my uh, for the hot flex two, which is the name of the other one, or my original, which is the keeper open. So cool, awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show, Steve. Hey, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Well, we want to thank Steve for being on the show today. That was awesome. It was. Well, Jeff, I think it's that time. It is. Tight lines, everybody. Cheers. Five. You've been listening to the Hard Water Fishing Show with Jeff and Jason. Say goodbye. One of the most unique podcasts on the planet where we talk about tactics, gear, and ice fishing legends. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Till then, signing off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.